Just like that. That's the way it should have gone on the first time. Oh, oh by the way, this, this particular kit is for three types of, of engines. Buick, Pontiac, and guess what the other one is? Ha! No, it's not Oldsmobile. It's Ford. Can you believe that? That is top dead center, ladies and gentlemen. Seven. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm not riding on a clipboard. This may take me several times. Nailed it. Hi. Welcome back. Fast Monty's Garage. Part 8 of our engine teardown rebuild process. Today we're putting the cam in. Thank God. I love assembly work. There's the cam box. There is a cam in it, believe me. The other things you're going to need is a cam installation tool. Your timing set, because we're going to do the uh, timing chain today too. And a degree wheel. This actually helps you set the correct timing for your cam based on your cam card and you can also double check the specs of your cam. Not totally critical, but highly recommended to do. You're going to need assembly lube. I have Comp Cams assembly lube for, the, for camshafts and lifters. And your preferred break-in oil, because we need to start coating some components in the break-in oil. Pretty self-explanatory. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so you can check out the next episodes. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so first things first. You want to make sure the number on the end of your cam matches the number on the cam card. So you see the, the serial number 38... See the serial number 38078619. So we're good to go with matching serial numbers. The cam card will come into play later. Uh, the other thing I have on the floor here is my brake in oil and my uh, assembly lube. I installed the installation bar onto the cam and this is why I do it because now you can stand it up on end just like this and then I can lubricate the top say the top half of the camshaft and then put it in the engine and then lubricate the rest so we're going to lubricate the three uh, cam bearing locations with engine oil and then the distributor gear and the lobes with the cam the comp cams a special lubricant. So here we go. Now we're ready to put it in the block. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. You don't want to force anything. And you want to rotate it. And my assembly lube on the on the lobes. Continue. All right, we got our cam in. Thank God. It's, but it's now time to put our retaining plate on. If you guys are running a stock cam, you can use your stock plate. No issues. If you're running an aftermarket cam or a roller cam, pay attention to this part because one issue is modern cams are made of a harder material than the stock plate. So I'm pretty sure you can find a new stock plate made out of machine tool uh, st steel, which is harder. It'll last longer. It'll be fine. But if you want to take it up to another level, I would suggest this bad boy here. This is from Sims Precision Machining. It's actually a roller bearing put inside the retaining plate. And it gets mounted just like in the stock location. Now, why does this exist? When you move to a roller cam, the dynamics change with the camshaft. A stock camshaft, the lobes are at an angle 
that is for to make the flat tappet lifters spin in their bores. So every time it goes around, uh, blah, 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 it spins. They're not perfectly flat. Actually, I think they have a little bit of a taper too. But the point is when they're under load, it's pushing the camshaft out of the engine. And that's why there's a cam plate there. Now, when we go to a roller cam, it's perfectly flat. So now the camshaft can move back and forth based on acceleration or deceleration because of the helical angle on the distributor gear. I know I've probably talked over people's heads there, but um, when you're decelerating, it's going to suck the cam into the engine. And when you're accelerating, it's going to push the cam out. Now, it's not a lot, mind you, but at high RPM, you're going to miss on timing. And that can be a big deal if you're working with bigger horsepower numbers or you're at the track, etc. So, this is the solution. It's actually a fixed bearing. There's a roller bearing on this side, and then on, there's another roller bearing I'll show you that's actually on the uh, cam gear. So, we're going to go ahead and mount this. It's really simple. Uh, we just need to make sure our oil hole right there lines up with our oiling slot in the block. So we'll go ahead. I'm just going to sit this here for a second while I get my blue thread locker. And I'm just going to put a dab on the end. You don't need a lot. Okay, so right now I'm finger tight. The kit comes with a little sleeve that we can put over the camshaft and will center our plate so it floats right now so we can actually put it on it goes right over the key you stick it in the plate and that centralizes it now we can torque it down so we torque this down spec is uh, 20 foot pounds all right we're good there so we can take our sleeve off all right, guys, it's time to put our timing set on. This is a Rollmaster timing set with that matching bearing on the back. Again, this is from Sims uh, Precision Machining. I'll leave a link in the bottom. I hope they're still in business. I don't know. If they're not, Butler Performance actually makes one very similar with a Torrington bearing. Torrington bearing is a little bit different. It actually has ball bearings, but it's loaded for thrust loading uh, in both directions, so you don't need that plate. I think it's a lower cost alternative. So when we go ahead and put this on, we need to pay attention to our timing. So here's our timing dot at the bottom. And what's mandatory, in my opinion, when you have a custom cam, you need to make sure you have a crank sprocket that has different settings on it so you can advance or retard your cam easily so I already went through the math and the measurements and I need to be at minus two degrees and I'm gonna go through why in just a second be patient <laughs> so when you first install your cam you install it at zero and the way to do that is you actually line up the zero mark right here I don't know if you can see it it's etched into that first into this tooth right here. So I'm lining up the zero mark with the dot and then you put it on and you're at zero. Do all your measurements and when I did the measurements I came out at 106 degrees. Now to get to 108 you it's it's opposite thinking. You don't do plus two to get to 108 you do minus two. So we do minus two. I want my minus two tooth If you can see it, it's right there, lined up with my dot. And then there's the corresponding minus two keyway right there. And I'll let it hang on here for a second so we can 
verify that we're straight up and down. So minus two on the dot. There's my keyway. And I'm also going to show you how to eliminate some frustration here because it's inevitable that this key is not lined up correctly when you put this on. So instead of doing all this trial and error, I'm going to show you the quick way to do it. So it started, and I can tell the key is against the back, not lined up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two fingers, and I'm going to hold the back of the camshaft journal right behind the bearings, because as soon as I turn this, it's going to want to push the cam into the engine. So I'm going to apply some pressure with my thumb. And I'm going to rotate the cam, and you'll be able to feel it engage. You might even be able to hear it. Oh, there, there it is. And I can slide it right on, just like that. That's great. We're lined up. I got my dot at the bottom. I got the minus two tooth right there. It's on the minus two setting. Again, same applies for zero and the and the uh, timing dot. You want to make sure you're lined up with the correct etching with that timing dot. When we finish this build, of the, I'm sorry. When we finish doing all the timing work and the degree wheel, we want to make sure this dot is at the top. Because right now, if we finish the engine build, our, our cam will be timed correctly, but ignition timing will be off. This means you're firing at number six, and that'll throw you off when you go to wire your distributor. So you want to make sure this is at the top when we're done, and we're, we'll be at the firing order, correct firing order. It's irrelevant right now for timing work. I'm going to take this off and we'll get started on uh, using our degree wheel kit and walk you through those steps. Comp Cam sells a kit which is really handy so it clearly comes with the degree wheel but it also comes with some other attachments. It comes with a dial indicator so you can see a dial what a dial indicator does is just measures distance we need to use that for measuring our lobe lift it also comes with this handy dandy tool, which actually slips right on, it's keyed. Oh, by the way, this this particular kit is for three types of, of engines, Buick, Pontiac, and guess what the other one is? Ha, no, it's not Oldsmobile, it's Ford. Can you believe that? I've never seen the guts of a Ford engine, but apparently it's for those three. So this must be the Ford, I don't know. Anyway, so this slips right on the crank snout, like that. It's got a little set screw on the bottom. Well, the, the neat thing is it has a, a, a half inch drive in the front so you can rotate the motor in either direction. It also has this little lock wheel because we'll put the, eventually we'll put the degree wheel right on here like that. Uh, some other things it comes with is some hardware for um, finding your top dead center and that's what we're actually going to do next this is for what they call heads off so this is a piston stop so what we're going to do is we're going to bolt this to the deck up here and we're going to run the motor I mean turn the engine over till the piston comes to the to there from one direction and then we're going to rotate the motor the other way so the piston comes up again and we're going to mark that on the degree wheel and the difference between the two is exact top dead center. So that's called heads off. Now if we're, our heads were on, uh, there's another th device you can get that you stick through the spark plug hole and it acts as the same thing as a piston stop. But um, as you can imagine, this is the better way because you can actually visually see everything. But if you're if your heads are on your car and you're doing a cam swap, you would do the heads-on method. That'll work. So I'm going to go counterclockwise. Notice the piston came down a bit. That's all we needed to do. I'll have to go a little bit further. 
and we will install our piston stop. So it actually comes with bolts. So we're secure there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the degree wheel on because we also need to come up with a way to measure where we are. And the kit actually comes with a, a little finger. And so what we're going to do is we're going to I'm probably going to use this one of this hole right here and attach our finger. I found my bolt and I put some spacers on it because it's too long. But we only need to get like two threads engaged. So, all right, guys. So I got my degree wheel on. Um, we're gonna find our top dead center, and so I'm gonna approach the hard stop. Just moving clockwise here. So there's hard stop. And then I'm going to take my degree wheel, just to make math easy. I'm going to line up zero right on the pointer. Now we're going to turn the engine the other way. And we're going to approach the hard stop from the other direction. Just right there. Remember we started at zero, we're on this way to 50. That means top dead center is right in between here. So we start at zero, ended up at 50, top dead center is at 25. So I'm gonna put the pointer at 25. I need to back the motor off a little bit. Now we can take our hard stop off. And I'm going to rotate the motor, doesn't matter what direction, until our hard, our top dead center is on the needle. And we're going to verify it by looking at the piston. That's like a half degree shy. And as you can tell, that is top dead center, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty cool, right? All right, team, now that we're at top dead center, I installed the rest of the cam or uh, the degree kit. This is really cool. It's blue anodized. It's uh, got elbows in it. It holds our dial indicator because we are now going to measure our lift. And to measure our lift, I installed one set of lifters, and we are positioned on the edge of the outer edge of the lifter because we want to measure any kind of displacement that the cam is making. We do not want to use the inside of the lifter because there's a plunger and that plunger can move. doesn't matter if it's a thousandths or not. It can move and it will skew our readings. So we want to be as accurate as possible. So I'm using the outside the lifter. There are two ways to figure out that we have the right cam setting. Both methods are on our cam card. So back to our cam card. Earlier we talked about the 108 degree intake center line method. The other method is by measuring when we have 50 thou lift, the intake should be seven degrees before top dead center. And, the, and on the back side of that lobe, 43 degrees after bottom dead center when the measurement's 50 thousandths. Now, I talked to Butler Performance extensively about this. I wanted to know how they do it. Which method do they use? And they use the intake center line method. To give you guys some perspective, this is what the cross section of the cam looks like. So there's our lifter. And intake center line is actually the center line of the lobe. So it's this drawing is a little off, but it's the center line of that lobe. So what we're going to do is we're going to advance the cam a little bit. So we'll be riding right in this area. And when we get, when our dial indicator says zero, we're going to back it off a hundred thousandths, go to fifty thousandths. 
So right here, we're going to take a measurement off our degree wheel. Then we're going to go past 50 thousandths on our indicator and take another measurement on our degree wheel. And we're going to add those two measurements together and divide by 2. And we should get 108. If we don't, I'll show you how we fix that. The other method I mentioned, which is the 50 thou lift, is actually measured down here. So you would rotate the cam until you got 50 thou lift, which is about right here. And that's how you get your 7. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm not writing on a clipboard. So 7 degrees. And then the other measurement was on the other side of the lobe. And that would be 43 degrees. So that's before top dead center, and this is after bottom dead center. So we are going to do the intake center line method. I set up a camera to uh, monitor our, our wheel, dedicated to our wheel, and we are currently set up at top dead center, as you can see right there. We are going to rotate the engine clockwise. And you should be able to see down here, the lobe will get to full peak. And what we're going to do while we get to full peak, so we're going to watch our dial indicator. It's going to sweep, stop, and then go backwards. Where it stops is where we want to change our setting to zero. So the hair is sweeping. It's getting to zero right there. So I'm going to back up a bit. And that's where I'm, I'm going to change my zero setting. Test it again. I'll go back and forth a couple times. That's pretty good. So what we'll do now is we'll back up the engine. So we go back to zero. So we basically went a hundred thousandths past our peak of our lobe, so we're down here on our lobe, and we're going to approach 50 in a clockwise manner. So we're going to get to, we're going to try and nail it here. Oh, it's pretty close. Oh, went too far. If I go too far, you keep doing this until, you, but you have to go back at least 50 thousandths. I like to do 100, and we're going to try and hit 50 on the nose. So this may take me several times. Nailed it. All right, guys, that actually took me five times to get there. So now if we look at our degree wheel, we are at 63 degrees. So you guys remember that. So now we'll advance. We'll advance the engine past our lobe center line. And we're going to try and hit 50. We're still going in a clockwise direction. All right, that looks like 50 to me. Now if we look at our degree wheel, 153, 152, 153. Back to our measurements here, we had 63 degrees at this point, and we had, let's call it 152. So if we add those together, that's 215 divided by 2 is 107.5 degrees. Remember our target was 108. That's really good. Because I kind of rushed this, but if we did it exact, it would be it would be perfect. And that's how you do it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I had to do to get there. I had actually taken 12 measurements. I did some at 0 degrees on the crank, plus 2, minus 2, and that was the one I did right before I filmed it. 63, 153 is 108. So here we go, guys. We just have to put our eccentric uh, cam on, and I'm going to go ahead and Put some Loctite or some blue thread locker 
on our nut. Little key goes in the hole. We're going to torque that to 40 foot pounds. There we go. So there you have it, everyone. Thanks for hanging out today. I hope you learned a lot. So this is exciting. We get to build the rest of the motor. So this ends part eight. Part nine is going to be a timing chain cover, oil pan, and whatever else we get to. So thanks again for hanging out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. So you know the drill. Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.